So here's a saying that used to be used more often than it is now, but um, it is used by a few people, usually the older people. I haven't heard it in a long time except from somebody in the real world, but uh, it's a true statement that's that needs to be applied into your your business, your home, your life, your time, everything. Your investments, everything. <clears throat> and if you get a hold of what I'm telling you, it makes total sense. And this is how the narcissist, this is why the long game is important. The narcissist has no long game. Remember, they're unstable. They're, there's no logic. There's just confusion. And there's no, there's just nothing in them that's worthwhile. If they don't have If a person has no skin in the game, why are they in your game? Why, why are they in your world? If they have no skin in the game, why are they in your world? In other words, there has to be some skin in the game. Some investment, some time, some pain, some struggle, some sacrifice, some loyalty, some dependability. If there's no skin in the game, they have nothing, they're not invested in it. There's nothing to lose, you know. And so they can just bolt, they can just disappear and bolt and there's nothing invested. There's no, there's nothing in there to, uh, to keep them around, to hold them, hold them accountable, you know. Let's say you've done something for 10 years and somebody shows up and talks a big talk for a week, for two weeks or whatever. They want in your world, and usually they just want in your world to steal, kill, and destroy, but they have no skin in the game, meaning whether it's football, basketball, or hockey, or whatever, anytime you have a game, some, you're going to get hurt. There's going to be some pain. There's going to be some uh, rub your your knuckles against a, a, the ground, uh, a turf or a wall or something. A goal or something. Your, your knuckles are going to be skint. There's going to be some... Uh, rubbing and bruising and all that stuff. There's going to be some pain. And there's going to be some lessons learned. And if they haven't learned the lessons, if they haven't learned how to uh, work with the team, work on your team, work with you, whatever, it's all about them, right? The only people really who understand that it's not about them are people who have longevity because once you stay in something long enough you realize oh it's not about me it's about the team the longevity of the team the longevity of the investment the longevity of the home the longevity of whatever it is if they have no skin in the game they're going to just throw it to the side like it's like it's junk like it's worthless but once they've invested they don't throw it aside as fast some people can throw it to the side even after being invested it takes a special kind of person if it's if if you wake up to a, a a situation that's unhealthy, yeah, you can throw it aside and move on. But most people never wake up. That's part of the trap. It's a 
slow boiling trap a lot of times but if, if it's a good team if it's a good goal if it's a prosperous goal you've invested in uh, time and energy and something you know most people who invest their life in a uh, person place or thing they usually don't abandon it, abandon ship. But somebody who's not invested, and they try to get on that, get on that, that ship. You can call it a ship. It's the best way to explain this because it's like a pirate. So your body's a ship, your house is a ship, your business is a ship, your family's a ship, your church is a ship. Everything's a ship. And so you start something, and people jump in who are not invested long term there's no skin in the game how long do you think they'll stay around how much da how much damage do you think they could do so the secret is set up the boundaries play the long game pay attention to the words words reveal everything another thing Another thing to look at is, is how much education you've uh, put into something. I mean, how much time you've put into something to educate yourself. How much education you've been through. I noticed this with uh, talking to an average person like we're doing an Uber and all. If somebody's not studied uh, calculus or math or science or psychology or the gurus or the uh, somebody who doesn't have a well-rounded knowledge of life for education wise you really just can't talk to them but at a certain level you can only talk to people at the level that they're on and it's sad because you know they're just total ignorance and, and you know everything out of their mouth is total BS you know it's like you're not even making sense you're not even using logic and it's it's true especially with somebody who can't rightly divide the word if a person can't rightly divide the word they always reveal themselves they always reveal themselves because the word never contradicts itself you just have to think multi-dimensional and multi-dispensational the d different dispensations reveal different truths. In the long run, they all go back to the same source, but unless you understand the different dispensations being used, you wouldn't understand. Like under law, grace, age of conscience, tribulation, millennium, <coughs> the new heaven, new earth, <coughs> the flesh mind versus the spirit mind. A flesh mind does not think like the spirit mind. Walking in the spirit is not rule-based living. And so the average person has not put the effort and the time and the energy and the prayer and the asking, the seeking and knocking and asking and begging God. You have to actually have some skin in the game when it comes to God. You have to beg God for the truth. Most people are under legalism. 99% of the people around you are under legalism. They wouldn't know walking in the spirit if you sit down with them for five hours. Because it, it's a it's it's a spiritual thing. It's a spiritual truth. God has to reveal it to you. That is faith alone, not of works. And if you really want to walk in the spirit, it's the new creature. You have to renew your mind. You have to think like God thinks, and not like the world thinks. And that has to do with digesting His truth, His word, His. His spirit digesting the mind of Christ instead of your mind.